So for years, Tesla investors have heard the beating drum that the competition is coming. The competition is coming. Well, yes and no. While there are now hundreds and hundreds of electric vehicles in the market globally, only a handful are really able to produce them profitably. So what's really troubling though, is that many of these companies are losing $30,000 or more per vehicle. So today we're gonna to review this and get a sense of which automakers might get past this and survive. So we have Jeff Lutz with us. He is a ex supply chain executive at many Fortune 100 companies and is currently running his own consulting firm. Thank you, Jeff. Great to be with you, Herbert. So this I, concept of the how much money that you're losing when you're creating a brand new vehicle it's common and that is expected. I guess, you know, you have tremendous experience because you have launched many new products to the market. You have managed factories and you understand how the price cost curve changes over time. You're in charge of supply chain. So I wanted to ask you this question um, and see what you're thinking about these electric vehicles produced by these various car companies. This was a tweet by Sawyer Merritt saying that um, here's the loss for every EV sold. This is as of the end of Q2 2023. You got Lucid at 544,000, right? That's huge, obviously, per vehicle sold. I mean, how much longer can they handle that? But, you know, it's understandable. They're building the factories. They're building a company around it. Neo is at $35,000 per vehicle. Rivian is at 33,000. But even the legacy companies like Ford and GM, uh, GM, they don't share that info. Ford did $32,000 per vehicle. Now, this person, Yulin Zhang, corrected uh, Sawyer's tweet saying, hey, the problem is that you had taken the Rivian loss number was taken from gross profit where all the other three cars were taken from net income. If you look at net income, Rivian's now at $121,000 per loss per vehicle. Jeff, what's your thinking about um, this, this issue of losing this much money per vehicle? Is this understandable? Is this an issue? What's your thoughts? Yeah, you have to start from a place of if you were at you know, like think of volume knobs. If you could immediately turn the volume knob and you're at a million units per year on that product line, you've got the volume behind it. You're at 5 million units per year. Can you be structurally profitable? And I don't think that that question has actually been answered for the competition. What you'll see them doing is, is you'll see them as they grow in volume, their loss per vehicle will decline. But the question is, is where will they structurally tap out where will it actually get to when they're at the, their intended scale? And what Ford and GM has, have told us is very interesting. They Both CEOs are on the record this summer stating that they don't know how to build a vehicle that has a, an, an, an average transaction price or a selling price below $40,000 profitably, meaning above 0% gross margin. They don't know how to build um, a vehicle like that this decade. So that tells you that what they've actually structurally designed, you know, in terms of unit economics, all the components selected, the number of components selected, the complexity in those components, the complexity of putting the product together, how they distribute the product, dealer network, the amount of inventory they carry, all the financing, everything that they, when you lump all that together, you get something called unit economics. And what they're telling you is none of the unit economics work this decade for the, for the tier of vehicles that are the most widely sold. Now, that was Ford and GM. What Rivian is what Rivian is saying is they're on this steady trajectory. Now, if you look at it from gross profit or you look at it from net income, they were, you know, they reported, I believe, recently from, from, um, from gross profit. And they said that, you know, in the last, they showed this trajectory going from losing over $100,000 a vehicle to 60 to 30 that's not going to keep going up, you know, thirty thousand dollars per quarter as they build some incremental volume. They're probably already starting to tap out. And they, Rivian has said that they they will they believe they can reach profitability next year. And that that may happen. They sell an eighty thousand dollar vehicle, so it is it is possible that, that may happen. The question is is did they fundamentally fix their structural unit economics so that when they build this R two vehicle you know, more than a year from now, probably two years from now, will they be able to attain the kind of gross margins that Tesla is able to do, you know, in their three and Y? So there's this thing starting, you start from zero and then you measure this thing called like, what's my time to break even? And 
And there's many different ways to look at this. You can look at it from gross margin. You can look at it from net income. You can look at it from, from, you know, from gross profits. You, know, you look at it from a number of different angles, but you're trying to figure out when can you actually be structurally positive and start actually generating cash from your business, free cash flow from your business. And, you know, for Tesla, that took a number of years and it took a tremendous amount of vertical integration to get there, vertical integration that they needed to do in order to be able to, you know, produce a vehicle at all because there wasn't a supply base. So I think this, I think the way where the EV industry right now is very interesting. There is no data today that says anybody builds an EV at positive gross margin, any EV at any price point. At, pro at positive gross margin than Tesla. I haven't seen the data. If somebody wants to drop something in the comments where, where, where an OEM has actually broken out and says this vehicle, I, I don't know, I, I, we haven't seen it. We know it takes BYD four, they have to ship four different um, vehicles. And again, that's, that's their whole vehicle population. That's not just EV. They have not broken out just EV because they sell gas vehicles, they sell hybrids, but four BYD vehicles have to sell to equate to the to margins that Tesla has on on one vehicle. So, yeah, so I think it comes down to in summary, I think it comes down to if you were to if you could magically put them up at max volume, do they have a structurally profitable product or not? I question that, and I question that from looking at the teardowns of the vehicles and the complexity in building those vehicles versus the complexity of Tesla. And you know, the Teslas we're seeing today were were designed essentially three to, you know, to six years ago, Tesla's working on their new unbox method, their new approach to manufacturing. So, and that will be unveiled in volume probably in 2025, maybe as early as the end of 2024. And, and I think that will just set Tesla out even further than the competition. So the, the question that the rest of the EV industry has to answer is, can they struck, do they can, can they come up with unit economics to build one vehicle profitably is the question that I think it's still, it's still, it's going unanswered. Nice. Okay. I'm going to watch a video short clip here of Eric Jackson, who's part of a portfolio manager for Eric um, or EMJ capital and watching him talking about Tesla as a profit machine. Here, the EV market was, I think the lowest it's ever been, but that, I don't think that's that surprising given the fact that everybody now has an EV. I mean, every, every manufacturer produces one is my point. So the competition is more out there. Are, are you looking more at market share? Are you looking at margins? Some investors have been frustrated with these Tesla price cuts. They're trying to grab market share, but some investors like Gary Black are like, hey, you're probably leaving a billion in, in, in revenue on the table. Well, I think it speaks to their position of strength and the fact that they've been at this for 15 years and just what a lead that is compared to uh, you know, all the startups that are, that are trying to you know, make money from EVs. And of course, the big three uh, and dealing with their strike and how that's going to increase their cost. So I think, you know, Tesla, you know, forest for the trees uh, here is that this is the EV gorilla that makes money and will make money for a long time. And so we can fret uh, and the bears can, you know, say that the gross margins are going down or something. But think about this stock. This has taken so much bad news this year. There have been supposed delivery misses. Uh, gross margins have been lower than they have been for a long time, uh, and uh, and and the bad economy hanging over every everybody and the rising rising rates. And th yet this stock is up 107 percent for the year. And I think a lot of the, the bad news about price cuts is behind them. So uh, I'm watching next Wednesday to see what the gross margins will be. I'm optimistic that they're going to hold to their word that it's going to stay way ahead of the big three automakers with their with their ICE uh, technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's going to be something that the, the market embraces. All right. What's your thoughts on his comments there? At least they make money, lots of money. <laughs> they make money and they're being compared to legacy auto that pr is still producing ICE vehicles um, and not EV only. And um, I think I think that's an that's an important takeaway. The other important uh, there's a, a number of important things in there too. The 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 gross margin piece for Tesla, you know, it's been on this steady decline this year. But MSRPs are basically returning back to the original point when they launched these vehicles. 
And, but what COGS have been able to do is COGS have been able to steady decline and COGS will continue to decline. So on the other side of this, when, when the rate situation clears up and, and they actually start cutting rates so the marginal cost for somebody to, I think 80% of, of cars are financed uh, today is the metric. So when the marginal cost of that starts declining, Tesla's already going to be at their lowest COGS ever. And they're currently at, they're going to be at their MSRP, their lowest MSRPs ever. The rest of the competition will have to continue to reduce their MSRPs. And if they're not in volume, they're going to struggle to reduce their COGS. So the, the equation is, is setting up pretty nicely for Tesla. Um, and, and it, you know, again, the, I think his point about that there's been a lot of bad news that's been baked into the stock. I think that's I think that's correct. I mean, a lot of this is out on the table. I think the expectations for Q3 are very low. And you can say, well, the stock has melted up over 100% on the year, but a lot of people would tell you it should have never melted down to where it did, you know, in the end of December. So, I think, you know, this is this is why this is why you have a market. This is why you have bulls, this is why you have bears. There's disagreements on both sides of this. But if you see the what I see as a takeaway is the deceleration in, in MSRPs or pricing is, 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 is happening. They went from across the board price cuts in April, January and April of this year to now only doing regional price cuts, a few number of trims, and then some inventory reductions. Now we're seeing a, even a smaller number of trims being cut. And let's see how the rest of this quarter plays out. I think Q3 is going to be kind of the messy transition quarter. Q4, I, I see them really stabilizing. So I, I think a lot of the, I think to Eric's point, a lot of the bad news has been baked in. So Jeff and I just did a video where Morgan Stanley talked about what they're expecting for Q3, Q4 next year. Go watch that next. Follow Jeff on X at the Jeff Lutz. Thank you again, Jeff. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Robert. <laughs>